Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. I don't know how many of us have been waiting for holographic technology to hit our television sets, our movie theaters, possible educational institutions. I've been interested in this for a long, long time. This month in Nature, there was a article about a breakthrough out of the University of Arizona College of Optical Sciences. We have here expert Dr. Pierre Alexandre Blanche, who's joining us to explain what a hologram is, how far the technology has developed, and to answer many questions I have about the many uses of it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Dr. Pierre Alexandre Blanche to its rainmaking time. Good day. Hi, Kim. Thank you so much for being here. That's my pleasure. I think the first thing we should do is have you explain to the audience what is a hologram. A hologram is the diffraction of the light by a structure to reproduce an image or a scene. So it's it's quite easy. Uh, you need to record uh, something, well, the hologram itself, into a material, and then the second part of the, the hologram is replaying that something that's the diffraction of the light to see the object. Now, I've heard that holograms also can have sound. Oh, no, 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 I don't think so. That was certainly a misconception. You can have sound played with the hologram, but uh, not, as you say, the hologram sound. So you can do hologram with sound. And explain what you mean by that, what the distinction is. Uh, sound waves are like uh, the light wave, and you can make them interfere and have and record that interference pattern and then replay it with with a sound but you won't see an image out of it it's uh it's mostly a technique not really of any use i know how did you become interested in holographic technology well i did my uh, my phd in optics and holography to characterize material and uh and i pursued this uh um, this career furthermore and had different projects and one of the the last project i'm working on is that holographic 3d tv we're all waiting for you <laughs> <laughs> thank you we yes. are so a lot of people are so excited around the world let me tell you how pervasive it is there was a conference that was given introducing the possibility of voting through electronic voting and they were trying to galvanize people to vote more and so Jim Rogers who's a commodities expert and guru an investment guru flew to Santa Monica California and the gentleman that was speaking was so excited about holographic technology he was saying and your televisions are going to be a hologram we're not going to have televisions like we have now do you know how exciting this is and I was thinking where did he get this information well, I hope you get this information uh, with, with our research project. That would be awesome. <laughs> Talk a little bit about your project. Basically, what you're doing, to my understanding, is you're showing the possibility of a full-color, rewritable, holographic 3D display and television. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, I, will, I will not mention television at this point because we are quite far of that and uh, we cannot have the the 30 hertz video rate but uh, everything you previously said is, is totally correct so uh, usually the hologram are static piece of art you can look at it on a different aspect and they are very nice but they cannot be refreshed once they are print, they are print forever. Uh, what we bring here, and really the core of our research, is a very new material where we can write the hologram, erase it, refresh it, and uh, the refresh rate is, is now two seconds. So it's a 100 time improvement considering our last uh, paper in 2008. What is this telling us about what's really possible? What does this mean to you who've been in this a long time? We move from static to uh, four-minute refreshing rate. It was in 2008. And now two years after, we improved that by a factor 100. And what does that mean is in two years, if we uh, can... Uh, 
keep up that pace and have another factor 100, we will be Viderate. And Viderate is what everybody is waiting for, for having a 3D TV. So maybe, and uh, nobody knows, but we are working hard on that, that in two years we will have that holographic 3D TV. Have you ever heard of Ray Kurzweil? No, unfortunately One of the great not. inventors of our time. It's at Kurzweil.com. He's invented, I don't know, maybe 600 different technologies for everything related to technology. I think he would be very interested in this technology. I know that holographic technology and projectors are used in the military industrial complex, which we spoke about a little bit earlier. Why do you think that holographic technology, for example, there's this educational side, there's television side, there's the ability to have like live entertainment. Richard Branson, remember he had a holographic image of himself? presented. I don't know if you know that, but he did a speech several years back and his image was beamed to audiences around the world. It was fascinating. Absolutely. And there's, there's a lot of technology that allow you that. Uh, unfortunately, they, they often refer to holography while they do not have anything to do with the scientific term holography. And uh, if you remember also, Gorillas and Madonna had a show together on scene, live on scene, uh, where that was said to be holographic projection of the, uh, the, show? Of the performance. But the, there's nothing to do with holography. That was not even 3D. But so the effect is really superb and, uh, and dramatic. So what I'm hearing you say is that a lot of the entertainment shows or presentations that we think as the public is holographic technology isn't? It's isn't. something else? Absolutely. Yeah, the, there's nothing to do with holography with the show, unfortunately. Let me see if I understand the details. So let's say that you're doing a presentation explaining holographic technology and you're in a room and your physical image pops up in another audience. You're saying that that's not holographic technology? That could be done by something else? Well, not necessarily. Uh, that could be holography, but that could not be. Uh, there's different techniques around that allow that. I have a patent I'm looking at. The Army Research and Develop a Budget Item Justification of Applied Research, the company. And they use holographic techniques, materials, and processes to support the development of visual and infrared deception system modules. They also have planned programs with holographic techniques. In terms of the military, how developed do you think this is? Oh, I mean, holograms are everywhere. Uh, they are on your credit card. Uh, but there is also uh, holographic setup display that are on very high and and expensive automobiles. Uh, there, there is a lot of holographic techniques used uh, to certify material. For for example, carbon fiber, uh, even tire in the aeronautic uh, aeronautic industry are certified through holography. So holography is a technique. And it is widely used. Maybe the uh, the common public don't know about that, but we scientists know that this is part of the optics and this is part of how light can be manipulated and uh, we use it. For example, here at the University of Arizona, uh, we are testing and manufacturing telescopes. Well, we are also using hologram to certify telescope. Hubble was certified with hologram too. Wow. I know that NASA has also investments and patents in holographic technology. There's a company called Total Immersion, I-M-M-E-R-S-I-O-N, and they're a global leader in augmented reality solutions. When you say augmented reality, is that the same thing as holograms? Well, once again, uh, uh, immersion and augmented reality can be done several ways. And hologram certainly play its part into that, uh, into that field. And uh, 